met de afzaal. Uh, our executive director NIH, Major General Dr. Ikram, uh, all my colleagues from WHO and all the distinguished participants from NDMA and NIH, colleagues and friends, ladies and gentlemen. I am deeply honored and humbled to be here standing before you in this wonderful morning to make another donation from World Health Organization to NDMA and subsequently uh, to the people of this country to NIH uh, to make a robust and uh, quality comprehensive response to COVID-19. Since the infection began here, we were working very hard with our colleagues, hand in hand with the government of Pakistan and NDMA and NIH and health authorities, federal and provincial, to see how best we can support for a comprehensive response for COVID-19. And since the first day, we were working very, very closely with the health authorities to ensure that point of entry screening is done perfectly and the rest of the response is, is uh, maintained as we intend. And also, we have collaborated very closely with uh, NIH since I came here for last one year. We have met so many times and working very hard, very closely with uh, NIH, uh, particularly the leadership uh, of uh, Professor Ikram is so uh, very much in this uh, COVID response. And I have to tell the World Health Organization always supporting the government. The government is under the leadership of Honorable Prime Minister and uh, His Excellency the President moving very fast and hard on the ground to make sure that all the response make as intended. There's a plan came out now jointly led by NDMA and supported by the Ministry of Health as the strategic preparedness and response plan which will be launched uh, hopefully uh, next Thursday to get more support from the international community. I don't think this is a time that I should speak in length, but I am very much impressed and happy how the chairman of NDMA is uh, under his guidance, the whole, the management team of NDMA is moving. Uh, on the ground to ensure that the response is quality, comprehensive, and robust. And also, the I should mention, though our health minister is not here, he is a public health specialist and giving his leadership as well for this uh, in the most uh, accepted way. And he is uh, taking all decisions on epidemiological data and science, and that's very impressive. We always consider uh, NIH as part of WHO and WHO as part of NIH. Uh, as you all know, whatever has been done on practically on ground is, is a teamwork. And I always say if we win, we will win collectively. And unfortunately, if we lose, we lose collectively. So it's a team effort that, that sails us through. And that's, that's the motive behind. That's what we have been working for. We are extremely grateful to WHO for providing all the assistance in this regard. And it's not one uh, uh, confined to such equipment. It's much beyond that. Uh, I'm extremely grateful to the leadership of Dr. Pelletha, who has always been there, just one call away. And uh, we, we have been working in a very close, collaborative manner. As far as NDMA is concerned, we are under working under the umbrella of NDMA. And at the thing, the time NDMA uh, took over this challenge, uh, the things uh, transformed in tremendous speed and the, the way the things were, not only it's the procurement, but uh, I think it, it's more so related uh, to the exact uh, precise utility of the item. That's also very something very, very important because procurement is just one aspect. And we have already devised a plan for replacement of these equipment and we start with the Shafa and then we'll discuss uh, with, with the other team management as well and that's how we're going to utilize them and rest be assured that we will make maximum use of these and not only for COVID, for years to come for other ailments as well. Most of the things are on the dot. Once I say it's on the dot, uh, we have been uh, able to take control of all our borders, both uh, rather all three, the ground, sea and air uh, borders. 
We have made arrangements to control the inflow of traffic. We have made the arrangements of uh, outflow of traffic. Although the borders are always controlled, but these are never controlled from disease point of view. These are never controlled from health point of view. So we have taken control of borders from that point of view. The second is that uh, we had a lot of difficulty in finding out right kind of uh, uh, personal protective equipment. Few of the pieces were imported from China. And in initial days, between uh, 13th of March and about 27th, 28th of March, we were in a deep trouble. Alhamdulillah, Pakistani nation has woken up. And at the moment, except N95, we are not importing any single piece of personal protective equipment. All we are buying from the local market. And it is, <laughs> and let me tell you, there's no dearth of uh, these uh, personal protective equipment. And let me also talk about quality of it. We have uh, clothing which is uh, of GSM 80 which is as comparable to any of the company which is in the world. We have GSM 70 and we have GM, GSM 60. And there are a number of others, but we are not buying those. So let me tell you that as far as uh, protective equipment uh, is concerned, we are good. We have already provided uh, 3,900 pieces once to all frontline doctors. Yesterday, we have completed the second round where we have uh, provided frontline doctors, nurses, and even those working in hospital, whatever they needed in 502 hospitals of complete Pakistan through Pakistan Army. And uh, today, most of them would find it with them. I know in Punjab and part of Balochistan and even Gilgit Baltistan, it is already with the doctors. Uh, let me also tell you that uh, we are now ready to supply over 100,000 PPEs to all hospitals every week and if uh, required we will be able to supply more and uh, as far as testing is concerned let me tell you that uh, on 14th of March we had 14th labot 14 laboratories and uh, we were testing around 800 or so and uh, today in the uh, National uh, uh, Command and Operation Conference I am going to raise this point that now instead of uh, people who are showing sign for the disease, we should not be testing them alone. At least we should start testing those localities which we are trying to put under lockdown. And we should take out people who are not affected, affected by it so that they can lead the normal life. Uh, let me also tell you that uh, I am also thinking to suggest it to the provincial government that they should at least go for the carpet testing for those localities which they fear that it can have an outbreak. I can provide them the capability because at the moment we have 39 laboratories functioning. We are working on 27 laboratories to come up in one week's time. Uh, 11 out of them are from military. Hopefully, we will be able to do it uh, by next Monday. Uh, if not 25, at least we are planning to have half in the line. Uh, I would also share with you that uh, today, in my warehouse, there are uh, uh, mm, uh, 600,000 uh, samples of testing uh, which are sitting in our uh, warehouse. We. If I include these seven machines, we have 14 extra machines now would be going in the warehouse and we would be distributing among those 25 which I had just talked about. Let me also uh, tell you that uh, we are harnessing our capabilities which are there in the country. For instance, I am uh, getting uh, uh, data on uh, TB laboratories and hopefully we can uh, do a lot of things with them. But the major breakthrough which uh, we had, there are there are almost uh, more than 100 uh, mobile laboratories which if equipped could be sent to the, those localities which uh, we fear that there is an outbreak in them and we can test those people and those who are not affected at least we can take them out or those who are affected we can take them to the quarantine center if uh, we don't want to keep uh, them in the localities. We take, can take the mayors uh, like disinfection of uh, disinfection of those areas too. 
lastly uh, I, i had already requested the dr uh, mahpala regarding uh, ventilators what we have already planned is we had planned was to have uh, uh, more than 200 2500 ventilators by end of april we that might not happen but we have carried out a kind of improvisation by uh, dedicating almost uh, 40% of ventilator which makes around 13 and 48 ventilators purely for covid and uh, we have also chalked out a plan that if the pressure increases more we can have another 400 from punjab to be converted into covid and finally we will have around 800 to 1000 ventilator including non invasive which we will be use, utilizing for the normal patient and those patients who could be sustained by the non invasive uh, ventilators and those uh, ventilators could be shifted to the covid patients so uh, as far as our planning goes we can sustain 2005 to uh, 2500 to 3000 patients even without the major induction of uh, uh, new ventilators in the country but as i told you we are banking on uh, till 25th around 1000 uh, and maybe a thousand in uh, may and hopefully the the way we are trying to take things uh, the curve will be gradual and we'll be able to face the entire thing smoothly uh, once again uh, in my personal capacity i would like to uh, thank uh, dr uh, palita mapala also the management of uh, who for always standing by us in every crisis i remember who coming in big way once we were working in uh, 2005 and uh, in earthquake and in 2010 floods i was there and i saw each one of you there thank you very much again for standing by us